Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to our Sunday worship. This morning we begin a new month of August, a month of compassion. And today we remember all prisoners and those who minister to them. We sing our introit hymn, Mighty to Save. with you and also with you praise the lord praise him you servants of the lord blessed be god father son and holy spirit blessed be his name now and forever 
we sing the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We say the Collect for Purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon your sins and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray the collect of the day together. Glorious God, you, you shower creation with abundance, awaken in us a hunger for food that satisfies that in the miracle of being fed we will be empowered to feed the hungry in jesus name who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen the first reading is from genesis chapter 32 verses 22 to 31. 
The first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 32, reading verses 22 to 31. The lesson is entitled, Jacob Wrestles with God. The same night he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and everything else that he had, And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Hear the word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 17, verses 1 to 7 and 15. The prayer of an innocent person. Listen, O Lord, to my plea for justice. Pay attention to my cry for help. Listen to my honest prayer. You will judge in my favor because you know what is right. You know my heart. You have come to me at night. You have examined me completely and found no evil desire in me. I speak no evil as others do. I have obeyed your command and have not followed paths of violence. I have always walked in your way and have never strayed from it. I pray to you, O God, because you answer me. So turn to me and listen to my words. Reveal your wonderful love and save me. At your side I am safe from my enemies. But I will see you because I have done no wrong. And when I awake, your presence will fill me with joy. The second reading is taken from the book of Romans, reading chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption as as sons. Theirs is the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs and from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 14, reading from verse 13 to 21. Glory to Christ our Saviour. The lesson is entitled, Jesus Feeds 5,000. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he went off by himself in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed by land from many villages. A vast crowd was there as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and it is getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus replied, That isn't necessary. You feed them. Impossible, they exclaimed. We have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves of, and two fish, looked up towards heaven, and asked God's blessing on the food. Breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave some of the bread and fish to each disciple, and the disciples gave to him to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted, 
and they picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men had eaten from those five loaves in addition to all the women and children. This is the gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a right spirit within me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This is the only miracle recorded in all four Gospels. See Mark chapter 6, verse 35 to 44, Luke 9, 12 to 17, and John 6, 1-14. The fact that it is spoken well of and confirmed its importance in the early church, the feeding of the 4,000, is also recorded in Matthew 15, verse 32 to 39, and Mark 8, verses 1 to 10. The feeding of the 5,000 is reminiscent of Elisha's feeding miracle in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 42 to 44. In that story, 
Elisha had only 20 barley loaves to feed a hundred people. When he ordered his servants to distribute the bread, the servant protested, Why should I set this before a hundred men? Elisha reaffirmed the order, promising they will eat and be satisfied and they will have some left over. The servant distributed the bread. The people ate and there was bread left over in accordance with the promise. The link between the stories is made even tighter by the reference to barley loaves in John chapter 6 verse 9. It is worth noting that both Elisha and Jesus involve others. Elisha's servant and Jesus' disciples to implement their miracles. He blessed it and when the people were handing it out, it was increasing. The increasing happened by the promise of God with the people and not necessarily by the hands of those who did the distribution. These feedings are also reminiscent of the manna in the wilderness, Exodus chapter 16, Numbers 11. Like Moses, Jesus had crossed over the water to the wilderness, verse 13. Like Moses, he is surrounded by hungry people. In John's Gospel, Jesus makes this connection even more explicit by referring to manna in his bread from heaven, the discourse following the feeding of the 5,000, which is in John chapter 6, verse 31 and 49. The feeding of the 5,000 is a compassion story. Jesus saw the crowd, had compassion on them, and healed those who were very sick. Verse 4. It is an abundant story in which God's providence provides a problem that seems, seemed impossibly large. It is also a Eucharist story with its overturned tones of the Lord's Supper. When Jesus heard the news of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew from Galilee. Matthew doesn't tell us where Jesus goes to. It would require only a short trip by boat to reach the other side of the Jordan, which was controlled by Philip the Trecha and not Herod. Nor does Matthew spell out the reason for Jesus' withdrawal. When the multitudes heard it, they followed Jesus on foot from the cities. How frustrating is it when you need time to be alone, then you are denied it. Jesus has good reason to be angry with the crowd for interrupting his solitude. Instead, Jesus has compassion on them and heals their sick. If Jesus can feel compassion for the crowds, he can also grieve the death of his friend and cousin, John the Baptist. Jesus' compassion overcomes his need for solitude. Just as Jesus felt compassion for the crowds in verse 4, the disciples also feel compassion in verse 5. They are surely hungry themselves, and you can imagine the misery that awaits the crowds unless someone takes action. Their approach to Jesus is very unusual. They do not address Jesus as Lord, but explain the obvious. This place is deserted and the hour is already late, verse 15b. They then issue an order, send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. Verse 15c. They assume that Jesus is so caught up in ministry that he has failed to notice the fading sunlight. 
I feel responsible to bring him back to reality, to promote, prompt him to, sensible, to act sensibly. The good that Jesus has generated from this ministry will dissipate if the crowd goes away hungry. All they had was the lunch that a little boy had brought for himself. Nothing more than five barley loaves and two small fish. The scriptures do not say this explicitly, but my suspicion is that this little boy heard what was going on and volunteered to give up his lunch for the cause. Barley was cheap and was usually reserved only as animal feed. And what's more, the word John uses to describe the fish is one that refers to a tiny sort of fish that you eat whole, bones and all much like our modern-day jolted sardines. When we faced with a challenge that is bigger than the resources we have to accomplish, especially when we simply don't know what we're going to do, let us stop and remember that Jesus has the power to meet the challenge and he already knows what he is going to do. Let's rest assured that he is simply testing us to see whether or not we will trust him. For Jesus to take the action we hope for, then we must offer the resources we have in our possession. Jesus takes our contribution, however modest or not, and makes it sufficient. When a widow pleaded with Elisha for help, Elisha asked, What do you have in the house? She replied she had nothing except a pot of oil. Elisha told her to borrow pots from her neighbours and to pour oil from her pot into the other pots. When she obeyed, her little bit of oil became sufficient to fill all the pots. Elisha then said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your son Live on the rest. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 7 In conferring blessings, God often uses what we have at hand. The disciples responded, We only have here five loaves and two fish in verse 17. The disciples emphasize not what they have, but what they haven't. They see not possibilities, but problems. Don't we all know someone who is like that? Their assessment is right on the mark. The disciples have five loaves and two fish. Seven items, enough for a small person, but the crowds spread to over 5,000. Not only have they assessed the food supply rightly, but they also have a point in their assessment of Jesus. He obviously needs someone to confront him, to bring him to his senses, make him face reality, send the multitudes away so that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. Act now before the situation turns ugly. Send them away. End the day on a positive note. Jesus, end it now. As an earlier generation doubted God, saying, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Psalm 78 verse 19. Now Jesus' disciples doubt his ability to feed the hungry crowd. We are always tempted to believe, as the disciples did, that we have nothing to offer in the face of overwhelming need. Millions of people are hungry and we have nothing to offer except a small box of canned foods. Millions of people are infected with the coronavirus and the AIDS virus and we have nothing to offer except a few rands. Millions of people are losing their homes and livelihood due to unemployment or natural disasters, and we have nothing to offer except prayers and a few blankets. Now, none of this would have happened 
if the disciples had simply taken the boys' lunch into their own hands, made everyone sit down on their own command, lifted up a prayer of blessing on their own authority, and then distributed it to everyone in their own power. All apart from Jesus. If they had done that, the impact of those five loaves and two fish would have been next to nothing. The miracle of the feeding of the multitude happens only because they brought the little food they had and offered to Jesus to bless. Now how could this have happened? How could it have been that the food was multiplied so greatly? And I'm sure you've thought about this many times and just can't wrap your mind around it. But when I think about it, it reminds me of a young couple who had married in 1979. A few months into their marriage, like all young couples, they did not have much financial backing. At the end of the month, as was their practice, they gave thanks to God, then put their tithes into an envelope and sealed it. After all the payment, they were left with only 20 cents. The young man said, let us open the envelope and use the money for the week and do catch-ups over the next months. The young woman said, no, they should not open the envelope. During their evening prayer, they read from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 1 to 14, the feeding of the 5,000. The young man took the 20 cent and offered it to the Lord Jesus with just this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you took five loaves and two fish and fed 5,000 people. Take this 20 cents and multiply it to five rand. Amen. The next day was Saturday and the young man went to work as he arrived at his destination. He met with another colleague who said to him while he was saying his prayers last night, the Lord told him there was a brother in need and he must give him five ren. The young man burst into tears for the Lord answered his prayers. Take a guess at who that young couple was. That was my parents, Ronnie and Sandy Alexander. I have no doubt that you are ser seriously concerned about turning 20 cents into five rand. In monetary terms of today, that would be taking your 100 rand and making it a 1,000 rand. For those who were there with Jesus, the distribution of the increasingly multiplying food, their sense of wonder and awe over Jesus multiplied as well. And as a result, Everyone had a feast, both literally and spiritually. This reminds us of the principle that once we bring our resources to Jesus, we must wait on his timing. Things might happen immediately after we turn things over to him, or they might not. They might be solved by him the way we expected, or they might not. It's all up to him. And when it seems as if he's delaying, who's to say that it's not because it was in his plan to accomplish several other things first? Things that were put on hold until we finally turned our resources over to him? In the Eucharist, we offer bread and wine to God. He blesses it, and when we distribute it, it is the body and blood of Jesus. That is is a miracle that happens every time we celebrate the Eucharist. We just take it for granted. In probability, most of us are going through very difficult times with our finances during this period of COVID-19. Or there may be other areas in our lives that need God's attention. All we have to do is offer it to God and wait for his time. Let us not, like Sarah, who fast-forward God's plan 
by offering Hagar to Abraham to give her children. It is a very hard thing to do at this time of COVID-19. But what is the will of the Father will come to pass. Remember, you must trust God. Amen. Dear Lord, we come to you this day to thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We pray for the people in this time of need, especially those who have been infected with COVID-19. May you give them the strength to overcome this virus. We pray for the families and friends of those who have passed on due to the virus. We also pray for the scientists who are trying to find a vaccine, Lord. May you give them this knowledge. We pray for protection over the frontline workers as well as the animals and people who do not have shelter during this cold winter, Lord. May you please be with your people. Amen. Father, we are your children and your spirit lives in us and we are in your spirit. Hear us, for it is your spirit who speaks through us as we pray. Lord, hear us. Father, you created the heavens and the earth, bless the produce of our land and work of our hands. Lord, hear us. Father, you inspire the prophets of old, grant that your church may faithfully proclaim your truth to the world. Lord, hear us. Lord Jesus, you called your disciples to take up the cross, deepen in each of us a sense of vocation. Christ, hear us. You prayed for your church to be one, unite all Christians that the world may believe. Christ, hear us. You forgave the you forgave the thief on the cross. Bring us all to penitence and reconciliation. Christ, hear us. You were rich, yet for our sake you became poor. Move those who have wealth to share generously with those who are poor. Christ, hear us. You cured by your healing touch and the word, heal the sick and bless those who minister to them. Christ, hear us. You knew the love and care of an earthly home to be with migrant workers and protect their families. Christ, hear us. You open and none can shut. Open the gates of your kingdom to those who have died without hearing your gospel. Christ, hear us. Father, we know that you are good and that you hear those who call upon you. Give to us and to all people what is best for us, that we may glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If people of peace are there, your peace will rest on them. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. We give thanks to God for all that has been offered in love, those who continue to give by EFT and those who give uh, physically. We pray together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor and the majesty. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. We will be using the first Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and indeed our duty and joy. Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, because through him, you have created everything from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you delivered us from the slavery of sin when you gave him to be born as man, to die on the cross and to rise again for us. Through him you claimed us as your own people when you enthroned him with you in heaven and through him sent out your Holy Spirit 
the giver of life. Now we give you thanks because in love you created us, in justice you condemned us, but in mercy you redeemed us. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Father, you are holy indeed. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him accept our offering of thanks and praise and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine so that it may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So to after supper he took the cup. When he given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy Father, with these your gifts, we your people celebrate before you the one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord. His rising from the dead and his ascending to the glory of heaven. Gracious Lord, accept us in him unworthy though we are, so that we who share in the body and blood of your Son may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Saviour in the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness. With whom and in whom and through whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour be given to you, Almighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to say,
the bread which we break. Is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We, we who are, are many, many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we, we are not worthy so much to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same, Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank, we thank you, you for feeding us in these, these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of the Holy Fellowship and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Keep us safe at this time of lockdown in the power of the Holy Spirit as we continue to live and work to your praise and glory. We pray for our country, Almighty God and Father of us all. We ask you to inspire the people of this land with the spirit of justice, truth and love, so that in all our dealings with one another, we may show that together we are one in you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray the prayer against the coronavirus pandemic. Dear, Dear Lord, Lord, we ask for your divine intervention to bring a swift end to this pandemic, for only you can. Please heal the sick, comfort the grieving, and replace every worried, anxious, and fearful thought with your peace. In your mercy, protect, strengthen, and energize all medical professionals, first responders, and emergency workers. Grant wisdom, knowledge, and guidance to all leaders throughout the world and in every arena. By your grace, provide for all in need, especially those who are displaced, stranded, isolated, and quarantined. May every one of your children and every nation look to you for help, strength, and hope in this time of uncertainty and distress for you alone are our refuge and our strong tower we come against this virus father claiming victory over it in the mighty name of our lord and savior 
Jesus Christ. Amen. The blessing, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We say the benediction together. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Saviour be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Be at peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Dear people of God, I would like to encourage you at this time. We pray for God's peace upon you. We know that many of you are losing loved ones and that you're having all kinds of challenges in your home, in your work life, and your spiritual walk. But I would like to encourage you this day to cling to the Lord. The message in the sermon will speak to your heart. And I pray that God's Holy Spirit will be your comfort and joy in this time that you may find challenging. May you reach out to one another and be doing what God directs, which is in times of need, the people of God came together in prayer. And so please spend your time also joining the prayer chain and any other prayer activities. Spend this time with the Lord, walking with him, depending on him, let him supply your need. And so we sing our recessional hymn, Redeemer. You can only come this far 